Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. My name is Veda and this is The Simple Budget. Here on my channel I show you how my family is using the zero-based budgeting method in order to get out of debt and simplify our financial life. If that sounds like content that you're interested in, I would love it if you would hit the subscribe button and join our little crew here. And with that being said, let's get into today's video. My gosh, he's being. Maybe edit that part out. Oh no, I'm not editing it. I want them to see what I deal with on a regular basis. Still, somehow you're the fan favorite. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And as you can tell from the title, we have some big news. Do you want to tell them? No, you tell them. You want me to tell them? Yes. Okay. We paid off our debt. Yay! <laughs> I don't use sound effects in my videos, so that's going to be the extent of it. Like a cheer in there. No. Yeah, right. It's just not my vibe. Somebody else's vibe. It's just not mine. No shade. Anyways, wow. We just went off the rails there. Um, there's really no way of like trying to keep you guys in suspense on a channel like this, where the entire purpose of the start of my channel was to show you... Are, are you just going to keep clicking? Um, was to show you our process of paying off our debt. So if this happens to be the first video of mine that you're watching, welcome to my channel. Um, thank you for visiting. Um, and over the last year and a half, um, I have showcased here how my husband and I have been using the zero-based budgeting method in order to pay off our debt. So we started January 2023 with just under $59,000 worth of debt. None of it was student loans. If you were wondering if, you know, we came about that in some sort of noble way. <laughs> no, we came about it honestly. We came about it honestly. Um, yeah, I mean, we just, we spent, I guess we're just going to go ahead and do a little simple family history here. So we never really... Um, budgeted properly. Mr. Simple is the person in our household who has always been um, fiscally responsible, but regularly going up against somebody in your marriage who is not financially responsible can be a challenge. And I took, I don't, I mean, I don't know if this is going to be like a psychology lesson, but um, I grew up very poor uh, and so did Mr. Simple, actually. Um, and <clears throat> they manifested in two different ways. Um, as a result of that, he became a financially responsible adult, and I became an adult who was trying to get all of the things that I never had when I was a kid. That being said, um, I have a different viewpoint on, you know, what money buys and all of those things now at this stage in my life. Um, and realized pretty quickly that $59,000 worth of debt is not worth anything that you, um, are trying to compensate for as a child. I just want to also state as a disclaimer, I had a very happy childhood. <laughs> I don't want to make it sound like, oh, we were poor and also miserable. No, actually, um, my parents were are my father passed away two years ago, but my mom is still alive. Um, and my parents were lovely parents, wonderful people. And despite the fact that we didn't have much, um, we had everything. So I don't want to make it sound like, you know, I was justified in accruing debt because we didn't have much when I was growing up. Cause that certainly isn't the case. Um, anyways, that was like a real mm -hmm. tangent, but yes just feel like it's necessary to point those things out when I say like, you know, I felt like I was trying to compensate for what I didn't have as a kid. It was just stupid, irresponsible financial decisions to justify acquiring stuff. Um, that being said, we have spent the last year and a half um, 
doing the zero-based budgeting method. And so if you are unfamiliar what that means, you can you know, subscribe to my channel and watch my videos and get a better understanding for how you can apply that to your own personal budgeting. But basically, we come up with a plan for every single penny that comes into our house. Um, some of that goes toward immediate spending, so stuff like groceries and mortgage, and some of it is stuff that we save in something called a sinking fund that is really just kind of like a little envelope that you keep for money that you're going to need in the near or distant future. Um, doing that for the last year and a half has really given us a strong handle on our finances and how much extra money we actually have coming in on a regular basis. And we applied nearly all of that extra money toward paying down our debt using the debt snowball method. We are loosely Dave Ramsey inspired around here. Um, he recommends following something called the seven baby steps. Seven? Yeah, seven. Seven baby steps. Seven. I'll go ahead and leave a link to the seven baby steps below. Um, you know, in case you're interested in kind of looking up to see how we've gone about this, but he also recommends in the seven baby steps, step number two is paying down your debt and using, that is using the debt snowball method. And this is where the loosely Dave Ramsey inspired comes in because we didn't fully follow the snowball method. Um, the idea behind the snowball method is that you list all of your debts in order from smallest balance to largest balance. And then you throw all of your ex, you pay the, I'm sorry, I always forget this part. You pay the minimums on each of them and then you put any extra money that you have in your budget toward the smallest balance debt until you pay it off and then you roll all of that money into the next higher, the next highest balance from that smallest one. Uh, we diverted from that here and there and if you check out my debt playlist, you'll kind of see the hows and whys behind why we made those decisions. I'm not going to go into that in this video um, just because the debt playlist playlist exists in order for you to be able to watch the process unfold. We would update every quarter um, just so that you know you guys could see the progress that we were making in our debt payoff. Um, and this is the final one. So I don't know, I guess two thirds of the way into quarter two, yeah, we managed 17 months. Yeah, it took us 17 months to pay off just under $59,000. Um, if you're looking for some sort of like magic explanation, there really isn't one. It was a lot of determination, self discipline, and we are very, very fortunate that we made some. We accidentally made some financial decisions that have benefited, benefited us along the way. Um, the number one of those being that we actually, when we did buy a house before we started paying our debt down, we had a ton of debt when we bought a house. But when we purchased our house, we actually purchased our house below our capability. Is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah. Um, so that is, I would argue probably like one of the number one errors a lot of Americans make is that you buy a house that's right up against your limit of what you're capable of. And that gives you little to no wiggle room in your budget. So I was, it had been a decade since we had purchased a home and I was absolutely indignant at the price of housing. And so I didn't want to buy a house at the top of our limit because I was disgusted at what you could get for that dollar amount, if that makes sense. Like mm -hmm. for me, it felt like not enough for the money. Um, and I feel that way about our current house. To me, I, I don't understand how I spent what I spent on this house um, because I don't feel like it's worth the price that we paid. But that's largely irrelevant to this discussion. Um, but anyway, so that was the number one factor in how we were able to put so much extra money toward our debt every single month. Um, car payment too. Our car was very, car payment relative to the average is, was very low. Yes, our car payment was relatively low and we only had one car payment. Um, so that was a good thing too. We bought a used car in, what was that, 2018? It was a three-year-old yeah. car at that point. And so our car payment was low. We only had one car payment. And, um, so those two things combined meant that we were sort of living below our means, despite the fact that our debt was so high. 
And so we were able to throw an average of about $2,000 extra a month at our debt. Uh, more often than not, especially in the last, I would say six months to a year of our debt payoff, um, it was more than that. It was somewhere between $2,300 and $2,500. And of course, in the last like couple of months of our debt payoff, we were just throwing all of the extra dollars and cents at our debt that we could. Um, to that end, I am gonna go ahead and open up my budget binder here just so that we can go over the last couple of months with you guys. Um, just so you can kind of see how we handled it. So um, I'm gonna just go to the debt section here. This budget planner is in my Etsy shop. It is about to be launched as a printed version so you can purchase it pre-printed from me. Right now I just have it as a you can download and print it yourself option. It is getting a little bit of a facelift, um, but by and large, it's gonna look mostly the same to what it is now. Anyways, I'm gonna just pop into the debt section here. These are the four debts that we started with. By the way, please excuse my manicure. Um, I still have not uh, given myself a manicure since my mom and sister were here. I know my nails are in an absolute state. Usually I like them to be pretty for you guys, but you know, when you're like coming back from vacation and You've got a million and one things to do to get the house back to normal. Um, that's what we've been focusing our attention on since then. So I haven't had time for a manicure, but in my next video, the manicure will be updated. Anyways, we started off 2023 with these four debts. We had a Chase credit card that had a balance of $4,762.35. We had a remaining car payment of $8,319.61. We had a 401k loan that we had taken out a few years before with a remaining balance of $19,373.94. And then we had a ginormous Mamba Jamba Visa credit card that had a balance of $26,491.40. So four debts small i think relative to the american average but very very large debts so as was the recommendation we sort of started off going at this one the chase card that had a four thousand dollar balance um but we were also very nervous about this large visa because the um What's the word? The balance was very close to the credit limit. So we kind of spent some time in the first quarter of debt pay down, throwing extra money at both of these, one to get this further away from the balance, but also to be able to pay this one off. We did pay this one off first, mm -hmm. um, but then we focused our attention over on the big balance here because we were just nervous about how close it was to the credit limit. And so we worked at this one until it got below $20,000. And then we threw our snowball efforts up onto our car. Um, and so from, I wanna say January of 2023 till about what, June of 2023, then we were able to focus our efforts on the car. I think that's how that happened. How long it took us to pay off our chase? No. From pay off the chase, mm -hmm. get this down to 20000 mm -hmm. and then put our money toward... The, you know what? It's oh, almost right. like I have the answer here. So we paid off the chase card in March of 2023. We started focusing our efforts on the car in June of 2023. Okay. Yeah. So that's what we did in order to just bring our ginormous balance down it was insane yeah um but yeah so then it didn't take us very long i think about in september of 2023 where we were able to pay our car off because we had gotten um what's the word i'm looking for we had a magic month in there mm -hmm. and so we were able to pay off our car using our magic month overage um, and so that really helped. And then we were able to focus all of our efforts, despite the fact that our 401k loan had a smaller balance, we focused all of our efforts on the visa. And the reason for that is because the 401k loan interest was being paid back into the 401k. The visa interest was just going to the credit card company. And in so far as I can help it, I like to minimize how much money they are given on any regular, any given day. So we focused all of our efforts here and then we just paid this one off. So it took us from September of 2023 to, when did we pay this one off? 
January of this year. February or March? No. Check it. February. Mm, okay. Whatever. Um, and we were able to pay this one off faster than projected because um, my grandfather passed away and hit my dad's portion of his estate actually went to my dad's children. And so we did get some money from the estate of my grandfather. I've been over this before, but I just need to caveat this in case this is the first time you're seeing me and you're like, why wouldn't you give that money to your mom? We did try giving that money to my mom and she rejected us outright. She wanted us to keep the money, um, all of her kids to keep the money. And um, so that's what we did to, I'm not gonna sit there and argue with my mom. So, um, I mean, I do sometimes, but for this, I pushed and pushed and she did not relent. And so I just let it go. So we took that money and applied it toward our visa. And then from February until May is what we can go over now with the 401k loan. So um, in February, oh, so this is the other fun part. So if you happen to be new around here, my husband is a federal government employee. And if you've paid attention to the news at all in the last year, the government has been on the verge of a shutdown several times. <laughs> Um, I could go into how my feelings on that, but if, if you've been around here any length of time, you know that I am not the biggest fan of the way that they handle their budget. Suffice to say that if we handled our budgets the way they handle their budget, we would all be bankrupt. Anyway, I digress. So, um, because the threat of a shutdown was imminent, we took, we decided not to... You all right? You gonna make it? We decided not to put any extra money um, toward the 401k loan for the months of February and March because we wanted to make sure that we had cash on hand in the event of a government shutdown because that means that my husband stops working and we stop collecting a paycheck. So um, we try to deal with that, cross that bridge as we come to it whenever that threat arises. And so instead of paying down the 401k loan, we stockpiled that cash in our high yield savings account and just waited and waited until they decided on a budget, they passed it. And so then in the month of March, I'm sorry, in the month of April, we took all of that money that had been sitting there and we put it toward the 401k loan. So we paid a total of $7,593.83 in the month of April. Did this include the escrow check or did May's payment include the escrow check? May's payment. Okay. So this was just money that we had stockpiled as well as, um, you'll notice here where I say the minimum payment is $446 a month. This comes out automatically from my husband's paycheck. We never see that money. Um, and so this $7,593 was the money that we had stockpiled plus the money that they just take out of his paycheck to pay it off anyway. So it was a combination of efforts there. And then in the month of May, we were able to pay $4,947.96, completely paying this debt off, uh, due in large part actually to the fact that we got a check from our escrow account. Um, similarly to last year, we got a check from our escrow account. I'm not really sure all the details. I know it includes like... Basically the the your escrow company or your bank uh -huh. um, projects how much you're gonna have to pay in property taxes every right, year. Right, 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 right. So last year we ended up paying a couple of thousand dollars less because uh, the state of Texas passed a, a law reducing property tax and all that. Right. So we ended up paying more to our bank in escrow. Right. Than we needed to and they essentially just gave us that money back. Right. We do an escrow audit analysis once a year. Right. Okay, so that's what that was. And so in addition to the $446 that would have come out anyway, we were able to throw a little bit of extra money toward it um, from our escrow check as well as the extra money that we had budgeted for it anyway. And that paid it off in the month of May, which we are very, very, very excited about. Yeah. Um, and so moving forward, 
Um, my channel is not going to change much. I'm still going to go through cash stuffings with you guys. I'm still going to go through weekly check-ins with you guys. All of the budgeting basics are staying the same around here at The Simple Budget. When I originally started my channel and I said that our goal was to pay down our debt and simplify our financial life, obviously if you've spent any time watching my budget with me's or my weekly check-ins, those things are not so simple. My budget is pretty elaborate and our weekly check-ins and how we pay money back is pretty elaborate. But simplifying our financial life really has to do with the emotional and like just what would you say like the mental side of it where we are freeing up so much mental and emotional space from a financial standpoint by eliminating the stress from our life that used to come from finances. Um, anybody who has ever even remotely attempted to budget or look at their finances in a serious way can relate to this, that our financial life used to really stress us out, predominantly Mr. Simple, um, because I just was not responsible. I was very irresponsible. I was very impulsive when it came to financial decisions and spending decisions more than anything. Um, and that really creates an environment where um, you feel very stressed about your finances and how you're going to fund your life. Um, and eliminating this debt from our life and more than that, really engaging in disciplined approaches to how we handle our finances have helped to alleviate that financial stress. Um, we just don't have it anymore. And it was so funny because when Mr. Simple hit the final payment thing, he and I both said, like, shouldn't this feel more significant? Shouldn't it feel more like this huge weight has been lifted from our shoulders or whatever? And because we both, it was, it felt like anticlimactic, right? right. Climac, climac, climatic, climac, climactic, climac. Yeah. Thank you. But actually over the next like three or four days after that, we kept saying like, we paid off our debt. We paid off our debt. So we didn't have this like huge ginormous, like weight lifted moment. But I think that's because over the last 17 months, we have slowly chipped away at the stress that was weighing us down simply by being disciplined, paying down the debt and knowing that we were moving forward in a positive way. And I think there's actually a lot of stress relief in budgeting in, in a zero based budget in and of itself. Yeah. Right. So it, it's maybe not on day one when you start it, but even, even the first, you know, couple of weeks or a couple of months that we were doing this and we had, we knew where every dollar, every cent was going. Mm -hmm. We tracked everything. Mm -hmm. It was actually, there was stress relief there in and of itself because yeah. we were marshalling all of our resources, Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and this process has been slow and gradual. Yeah. And, and the fact of the matter is too, is, is not to, you know, downplay what we've accomplished, but we're actually only halfway, you know, oh. paying off debt is, is one step to a two-step process that that makes you more fi financially secure. Yeah. So we've paid off our debt. Yeah. So now it's time to build the emergency fund. Right. You know, which is step three of, of Ramsey, you know, method. Yeah. The baby so, steps call that you save for three to six months. And actually, I'm going to speak to this a little bit. Um, three to six months of finances. So in the event of some sort of catastrophic, um, like financial emergency, like somebody loses their job, um, you want to have six months, three to six months of expenses saved up in an emergency fund. Mr. Simple and I have made the decision to do six months, which is going to equal about $36,000 for us. So that's a huge number, but it's not a number we're scared of because we just paid off $59,000 of debt. Um, 36 is something that we both feel we are going to achieve quickly and easily. We we went, th we, we did go back and forth for a little bit on, on saving three months and then sort of diversifying our efforts because we want to make sure that we have a $10,000 car fund that we're starting in the event that our car just gives out on us. 
Um, we also have plans in the future to buy some land and build a house on it. Yeah. Um, bigger dreams, but we were talking about diversifying our efforts. And then we just discussed, you know what, let's not cripple our efforts toward the six months. At that point, if we just gung-ho the same way that we did with the same level of intensity that we paid our def debt off, if we use that same level of intensity to save up our six months emergency fund, then all of our efforts after that will be able to go toward other things and dream building and things of that nature. So that is our next move. And we will keep featuring that here with you guys, um, showing you our progress every quarter, just like we have, um, how far we've come in saving for our six months emergency fund and um, just showcasing our budgeting along the way because my biggest hope actually here for my channel moving forward is that one, if you are in debt, you take inspiration from the fact that if you apply yourself, you can do this. This is possible. You will get out from underneath of whatever debt you are living under. But also that once you do that, your job is not done. You can't sit back and just relax on your finances. You still have to enact the same discipline moving forward if you want to maintain your lack of debt and if you want to dream bigger dreams than you ever thought possible. I have always wanted us to own land and build a home that we love and it doesn't feel like a pipe dream anymore. Um, it feels like something that's actually within reach for us and that makes me so excited and if you guys are still along for the ride, we'll take you on it if you're interested in it. Maybe eventually we'll even show our faces a little bit more. But um, we are in a place now where those things seem possible, whereas before we were just weighed down by $59,000 worth of huge mistakes. Do you want to add anything else? I was just going to say, you know, if... if if you're like us, there's not going to be this watershed moment of, of relief. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't feel, I mean, I guess in a way I feel more relieved now than I did in, at the beginning of May. Sure. But not a huge amount. Right. And I don't think I'll feel much more relief when we have six months of emergency fund versus five months. Right. There's not, I mean, I guess I attribute it to, I look at it in the same way that I look at happiness and joy. Mm. happiness is sort of a fleeting temporary emotion joy is a is a deep undercurrent sense of contentment satisfaction you know something of that measure so mm -hmm. in, in this process there's not a lot of happiness mm -hmm. but there's joy mm -hmm. you know i feel like uh, i feel like that's sort of a good way of summing it up that is actually because you don't yeah, but but don't let it don't let it be misrepresented. There's not misery in this, no, or sadness. I actually think there there is happiness, but not in the fleeting sense. Right, it's, it's a deeper sense of contentment, of knowing you're doing the right thing, of being responsible, of realizing that the things that you were chasing after, the, that you were spending money on, are not worth it. Right, you know. Right. It, well, even my even so, yeah, um, Mr. Simple has to dip out because he's, you know, like a responsible, gainfully employed adult or something. But um, I kind of similarly to what he was talking about, is it a simple budget, budget video if I am not interrupted by a child at least once? No, it is not. Anyways, like I was saying, um, to just kind of piggyback off of what Mr. Simple said about happiness versus joy, um, one of the things that has really struck me is, you know, one of... <laughs> the benefits, and I'm using this term very loosely, um, that you get from purchasing something, if you're anything like me, is the instant gratification dopamine hit. That dopamine hit is powerful, and you keep chasing that because um, you usually are not making spending choices or purchasing things that actually like satisfy you. And I'm using this term loosely because no material thing is ultimately going to satisfy you like in a significant way. Interrupted again. Um, 
But what I mean is that what this 17 months has shown me is that actually when you are forced to think about your purchases, you are much more likely to buy something that is significant to you or matters to you um, in a deeper way. And again, I'm using that very loosely than the impulse purchasing that helped to contribute to us getting into debt um, on my part. <laughs> um, and so that's something also that I've really had the time to reflect on over the course of this 17 months is um, that, you know, those fleeting and impulsive moments don't actually feed you in any significant way. And when you're disciplining yourself and you're only buying things that you've really spent time thinking about and making sure that you really want, you end up with a home or a closet full of things that actually matter to you and you're likely to utilize. Um, and I'm, again, I'm using that loosely. Not everybody likes to buy home decor and clothing like I do, but apply that to your own, you know, spending habits. Um, and the outcome is the same, I promise you. Um, but yeah, so that's really it. That's all we wanted to kind of touch on in this. Like I said, moving forward, um, the channel is going to remain the same. I'm still going to do budget with me's. You're going to watch our savings progress and savings goals um, in the same way that we updated you about our date. So every quarter, you're going to get an update on where we stand in our emergency fund um, and you know, even getting to see just a picture of how we make that happen and then what we plan to do financially after that. So I hope that you are still enjoying being part of this process and being along for the ride with us here because we love being here and having you guys here with us as well. So that's it. That's going to do it for today's video. I hope that this encourages you or inspires you in your own process of paying off debt. I know that it is something that many Americans are dealing with. It's not just me. It's not just you. And I hope that we can be a community and an environment here that encourages each other out of that sort of financial just difficulty and into a much more joyful and fulfilling financial future. So that's that. And I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. I'm going to be back with you again on Thursday for our June budget with me because if this news wasn't enough, we have some other news that we'll be share I'll be sharing in that video, the June budget with me. Um so it's just big times around here in the simple household. So yeah. It's, it's a big one. And then at some point, I'm also going to be um, showing you guys what's coming to my shop. I'll be announcing the June shop relaunch and sale. So stay tuned for all of that. I look forward to being here with you guys again. And until then, I hope you have a good one. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.